The Sony A5100 is a camera from 2014 that still rocks the online video world today. With this video, I'm going to convince you that you should absolutely buy an A5100 in 2018, mainly if you are looking for your very first camera or if you need a second angle to back up your main shooter. Let's get started. What's up everybody, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So this is a new video style for me. I'm always beating around the bush on whether you should buy something or not. And today we're gonna take some of the ambiguity out of the air and get straight to brass tacks. This is why you should buy a Sony A5100 in 2018. Boom! We're gonna, we're gonna drop this later. <laughs> so let's start off with the obvious. It's 2018 and the A5100 was released in 2018. What could it possibly still have to offer the world four years later? I mean, we got rid of rotary phones and VHS around the time this camera came out, right? R right? Well, actually, it offers a lot, especially if you are a photographer or if you are an online content creator like myself. Before we start talking about the A5100, we need to dispel a myth. And this is a myth that I fully fall for all the time, so I don't blame you if you also do, but we do need to get it out of there because it's not necessarily true. Image quality is not the most important aspect of a camera if your delivery platform is online like YouTube. It's not. Huge channels grow with only cell phones, so needing the cutting edge camera gear is only important if it smooths out your workflow. And I'm talking to me when we say this. Well, Everyday Dad, if image quality isn't the most important, what is? Two things, audio and efficiency of workflow. Now, I know those are not nearly as sexy as image quality or pixels or sensor sizes. I know that. But at the end of the day, as someone that has spent a year and a half making over 400 videos, these two aspects are more important to me than anything else bar none. And the good news is the A5100 excels in one of these and I mean it does need some help on the other but that's not the end of the world. In fact this entire video is being shot on the A5100. You can see, look hey here's the other camera. You can see on the other camera here that we're doing everything on the A5100. It is such a versatile platform and I hope to convince you that you should go out and get one because it is shockingly good. So let's talk about audio first. This is the main detriment of the A5100. It has no audio import. Now this is not a deal breaker and you can still get high quality audio by recording off camera with something like this Zoom H1N. Heck, even the super expensive Sony RX100 line of cameras doesn't have audio in, so even expensive cameras need assistance at the same time. And let's really dive into the rabbit hole. You are missing a function from the camera itself that you need to supplement with an aid. Seriously, we're getting ready to drop this. Pay it, pay your attention. Every single other Sony camera on the market has this problem. Boom, I said it. That was louder than I thought. Hopefully I didn't just break my microphone. Yes, the 5100 needs an audio recorder, but even my A7 III needs a monitor if I want to use it effectively. Seriously, there is no difference in needing an external audio recorder and needing a monitor to see yourself, which is where the A5100 excels at ease of workflow. It has two things that put it far above other budget camera options, fantastic autofocus and a flip up screen. Let me say that again. I bought this for $300 and for that price, I get phase detection autofocus and a flip up screen. All of that is in an incredibly tiny package of a camera. Almost every social media platform has some form of algorithm that rewards frequent uploads. Being able to trust the camera has the subject in focus and that you can see what is in focus and if it's properly exposed or not in a single device that's smaller than the monitor for my a7 III, that's amazing. And again, I want to remind you, this entire video is being shot on the a5100. Well, minus the b-roll shots of the camera itself, everything is shot on it. I'm using my favorite Sony lens, the 28mm f2, and it works awesome on the a5100. 5100. And even the audio recording off camera will just take one click to sync up and post, not a big deal. But if you don't believe me, let's go outside real quick and let's give it a shot in uncontrolled setting because anything can look good in studio, right? Because I control everything that you see right here. Let's head outside where we don't control as much. And so yeah, you can just take the Sony A5100 with you wherever. It's a super portable package that just works. So like we've talked about earlier and we'll talk about here in a little bit, my A7 III needs so much stuff to get it working to where I can see it right now. And you can see, look, the 5100 needs nothing except external audio. We're currently recording audio on the Zoom H1N. 
which is not that big of a deal when you consider that this package right here sets up, tears down, is ready to go within seconds. And if you take a big mirrorless camera, it's gonna take, it's gonna take a while to set it all up. It's also really good in low light. We are currently at dusk right now. The sun's gone and I still have to worry about overexposure because we're on a pretty fast prime lens right now that you can easily do with Sony's APS-C sensor. Sony's APS-C sensor is fantastic. It is fantastic. So right now, this is what we get when all we use is the camera. But one of the nice things about the A5100 is it's not only the camera, you can still build this up and turn it into a huge mobile video making platform if you want to, if you want easier audio, if you want more mounting options, if you want more ways to use it, that is too easy. You can easily upgrade it into something like what I normally use with my a7 III. So this is what we've got right now and now we're gonna see how it is when you set it all up into a big production. And this is a second shot with the A5100. So as I've said earlier, you can use the A5100, tear it all the way down to just the camera and the flip out screen and you can get excellent, excellent results out of it. It is basically a sensor that you can put whatever Sony lens on. It's just incredible. This shot might not look any different, but just because it's a tiny camera that you can take anywhere doesn't mean you can't build it up. So this is a setup that you can totally get going on the A5100. You can install it in a cage. This is a cage I've used with my A6300 before I got rid of it. You can hook it up to an external monitor. I've got the wireless lavalier plugged into my Zoom H1N recording all the audio. So look, let's wander over this way and you can still get really good audio, but it still has the good autofocus. But even with all that, it still has the good autofocus. Like, look at how good it is. So you can build it up however you want with additional stuff to make it even easier and even better to use. That's why I like this camera so much. Okay, back inside. <laughs> and we're back still on the A5100 by the way. So full disclosure, there are two major limiting factors of the 5100 that I wanna make sure you're aware of because I don't wanna hide anything from you. The A5100 can record in up to 1080p 60 frames per second. So if you need 4K, sorry, the best you can do is upscale it. And that's not really an issue if you're looking at a budget camera. However, the main problem with the A5100 is the same problem as in a lot of these small body Sony cameras and that's overheating. If you record in 1080p XAVC for long periods of time, the camera will absolutely overheat. If you're in a hot environment, this will happen faster. But if you're just doing inside stuff or you can take smaller clips like I do, I've never had a problem with overheating on that. I have problems with this overheating all the time, but I still, we'll talk about this later. I love the RX-105 too. Now at this point, normally I would say a so what and summarize the point of the video, but this whole video has been the point. It's been leading to one statement. You should absolutely buy a Sony A5100 in 2018 if you need a portable, light, mostly all-in-one package that pound for pound is the absolute best deal in the video market. This is one of the only cameras I recommend to people that want to start out. Because anything less than this really and your cell phone is a better deal. Even some cameras that cost this amount, I do not recommend because they're just, they're not worth it. But I'm curious, what do you guys think? What is your favorite budget camera recommendation? Leave a comment below and let's, let's have a chat about it. Maybe you'll introduce me to something new and we'll go out and try it and then it'll, we'll make a video on why you should buy that one. Thanks for watching.